Hey guys, welcome back to our course. We're now on second episode, which is where we look at the asset folder quite a lot. Now I say asset folder, but it's actually called the project window as well. So uh, let me just have a look down here. This is what we call the project window. If you right click in the middle of it and you do a show in Explorer, you're going to end up in your actual project folder. So uh, let me just step back. This is where we decided to save our folder when we first made our project, right? So this is our project folder. If we just click on it, there is going to be four folders. Well, actually there's three of those, but uh, temporary is only there when the engine is booted with your project open. So right now Unity is open. This is why I have a temp folder. Now one of these folder is actually called the asset folder. And what you're going to realize when I click on it and I just move it on this side is that it is a reflection of the project window you see on Unity. Now, if I just go up here, I'm on Windows Explorer on the left side here. If I just right click, create a new, say a text, I call it say Dave and I just save. If I go in my engine, as you can tell, my text asset is there. So I have the scene, which we saved in the last episode. And I also have this text file. If I double click on it, it opens it in my default text editor. Uh, in this case, that is Visual Studio. So if I just say, hello world, I close it. Now my file called dave.txt should actually contain hello world, which we can see through the inspector, but we can also see by going back instead of the asset folder, double clicking on that. And in the notepad, as you can tell, it says hello world. And if I just write something here, uh, I'll say hi back, save this. It's also going to be reflected in here as well. So as you can tell, they are the very, very same thing. If I'm just playing with stuff in the asset folder here, I delete Dave. It's also going to be deleted from this window. Same thing goes here. So if you were just to create, say, a C sharp script, create it, you go in your asset folder and here it is, the new behavior script. Now, if I delete it inside of the project folder, this is an action you cannot undo. So you gotta be really careful about that. If you delete stuff from the asset folder um, through the project window, it's gonna be deleted for real and it's gonna be ending up in your recycle bin. So you gotta be really careful about that. Uh, you can also restore them if you wish. We're gonna going to restore both of them. And as you can tell, it is just going to re-import. So now that we understand that the asset folder slash project window is uh, just the same thing, then uh, we can start importing some asset. Now, when I say asset, I'm talking about texture, I'm talking about models, I'm talking about material, fonts, all that kind of good stuff is what we call an asset. And that is what your game is made of in the end. So uh, let's just give it a try right here. I'm going to create a new asset. Let's start by a folder actually, just a normal folder that I will call artwork. I'll also create another folder called scene and what else? Let's go ahead and create one more folder that we're going to call script. Now I have three folders. What I want to do with those is just pull them all in um, the root asset folder. So I'll simply drag and drop like this and now they're all in different folders, right? So I'll take my game scene, which we created in the last episode and drag and drop it inside of my scene folder. All of that is always being reflected directly inside of the asset folder in the Windows Explorer. Let's actually talk about importing some actual asset now. So if you're an artist making some texture in Photoshop, what you're going to end up doing at the very end is uh, saving your file as a PNG, as a target file, as a JPEG. You're not going to be saving it as a PSD file uh, because that doesn't work in UD yet. But still, Let's just assume that I've made a texture. I'm going to find a texture really quickly on my computer. Say a um, PSD here called Animation Fox, right? Let's open it in Photoshop and I'm simply going to save this, save as PNG file. I'm going to put that on my desktop, why not? And now here is how you import. It is very, very simple. All you have to do is drag and drop it inside of your project folder. So you could be going from here, drag and drop this in my project window slash asset folder. And now it's part of this. You can also do something else with it. You can also um, do it via the asset window. So say if Unity is not even open, so we're gonna close that, I can still find my project folder, which is under 
uh, pretty much where you saved it, in my case Snake Tutorial, you can simply go here and drag it. So now you really do understand that uh, those are the same exact thing. If we just open it up really quickly, and inside of my project, there is the texture I imported. Now this was a quick example. We're not going to be using this image because it doesn't really make sense in our case since we don't really have foxes. But uh, just to show you just a quick mechanic how this works, I've grabbed this picture of a box, just a simple side of a box on uh, Google. And we're going to be looking at what happens when we put it as a material for our boxes. So box texture, I rename it here and I drag and drop it inside of my project folder. I can also rename it in my project folder, it doesn't really, um, it's the same thing. So we have this box texture. We can also have like a nice little preview on the right hand side here. What we can do at this point is drag and drop this on top of an object. If we do that, you're going to see your cursor is going to change. But when we drop it, it creates a new folder and it also applies a texture. So the folder it created is called materials. Now materials are pretty much just a mix of the texture you've decided to put on your object and also what kind of rendering technique you're going to be using. So in this case, it's using a default, well the standard shader and it's using this texture we put. You can also change it, you have some different texture in default when we um, first start Unity you have all of those by default. But we're going to go back to our box texture. Now all the little settings here you can modify so you want to make it metallic you want to make it more smooth, you can play with all that via the shader. There is a lot of stuff you can do here. I'm just going to let you play with that because that is really like complicated stuff and we're not really um, at that point just yet, but there is a lot of things to do here. Now at this point, if you want other box to actually look like that, you can drag and drop the material on top of them as well. So as you can tell, we end up with four little boxes here. Now I tend to put my texture inside of the artwork folder and also the material inside of the artwork folder as well. So everything that is art related, I just put that in the artwork folder. This is just something I do personally, you can just leave them hang in there if you want. It's not going to break any reference. Um, if you were however to delete one of these, you would end up with like really pinkish material. So when Unity is actually trying to draw those boxes, it's looking for which technique it should use for drawing, so which rendering technique it should use, which shader, and all of that information is contained within the material. But now the material is gone because we deleted it, so um, we end up with pink boxes, which just means that uh, Unity is telling you that there is a problem and you need to fix it now, else you're going to have that in your game. So we're just going to create another material in another way this time, instead of just drag and dropping like this like we did earlier, we're going to be doing in a different way. We're going to go up here, create, and just material. Now you get to choose which name you want to put it. So I'm just going to say box or box material that could do the job or simply box by itself. Now the box material is what I'm going to be using to display all of those four boxes here. You can modify like the color if you wish but we want this to have a texture. So over here on the albedo, click on box texture and you can also just give it a small tint if you wish as well. Okay, so this covers pretty much just a normal texture in material. Now let's talk about actual 3D models. So if you guys actually like go inside of 3ds Max, Maya, Blender, the way you actually just uh, get a model of this is you do your modeling, that's fine but you actually export as a FBX. Now FBX is a really common way to uh, describe a 3D model and this is what most engine use as a default. Unity is no different. If you just put the FBX inside of there, it's going to convert it back in their own format, but you know, it has no problem reading in FBX is what I'm trying to say. Now since the new update uh, really recently, it's also taking in Blender file. I don't know for how long it's actually going to take them, but if we just give it a try here, I have an object that just lays somewhere in a folder here. So let me just go check. Right here, I have a low poly wolf. This is an actual Blender file. I'm going to actually drag and drop this in my new folder here, in my asset folder. And as you can tell, you can actually get a preview down here. This is a Blender file, but it was able to actually convert it to a Unity model file. 
So this is really cool, something really new. Now, if that doesn't work for you, you're using an older version of Unity or it just decided not to support the Blender file anymore, which can actually happen because Blender decided to change their file format every now and then. So if that doesn't work, go back in Blender, export your model as an FBX. You're 100% sure it's going to work if it's in the FBX. And then what you can actually do is um, once you have this here, this is an actual model. So I'll take that, drag it in my artwork folder, and if I want to see it in my game, I can simply drag and drop it in my scene, as you can tell, or drag and drop it in my R key, which is going to put it at 0, 0, 0. And you can play around with it, modify the scale, have a lot of fun, and that is an actual model. Now, when you have a model like that, when you import a model, you're usually also importing a material from either Blender, 3ds Max, or Maya. So, uh, in Blender, I had three different materials for this very model and they were all imported inside of the material folder. I had one called black, the other one is called unnamed and the other one is white. So um, just with this easy definition, I'm just assuming that the black is the material called black. As you can tell, it has a tint here and the white is the white part of the little low poly wolf. If I change those, I'm actually going to change the color of the wolf. So I'm just directly playing with the material I've imported directly from Blender. So that is pretty much what happens here and you can just modify that. Now if I was to delete these, as you can tell, I've deleted the unnamed. Unnamed was actually what was on the uh, little sphere here. If I delete white, they're going to be rendered as pink. And I'm finally going to just pretty much just delete everything. And let me just delete that wolf because I'm not going to need it anymore. Same thing for the box actually, and we're just going to go back to having a clean folder, which is what we're aiming for in the end. Um, we're trying to have this clean as clean as possible because if it's clean, then you can actually work with it better. Right, there is a lot of other stuff you can actually import. You can import sound file. I didn't talk about that before. So let's just say that everything artistic would be an asset and you just import it via the, uh, the project window or the asset folder. Now one last thing that is actually an asset as well that I didn't mention is um, the script. A basic script that you would write is also considered as an asset. So if you go right down here and you do a create, now you have the option to create a C Sharp script or a JavaScript. In our course here or like on the whole channel, I've never used JavaScript. I really do not like uh, using JavaScript for Unity. I'd rather use C Sharp. I think it's more powerful. Uh, you could get in like in the debate with me, but I don't really want to. I don't want to argue about this. But um, every reference you're gonna be looking at, everything you're gonna be looking at online, uh, if it's a little bit higher than just like noob stuff, if it's a little bit more advanced, you're gonna be seeing this in C sharp. This is why I recommend that you learn C sharp, and it's also I think something that um, is gonna be quite useful for just transition over to other game engine or transition over to other kind of development if it's not web development. Now if I just click on this and we create one, let's just call it uh, rotate, why not? It creates a C sharp script and it just gives us some basic information in it. If we just open it really quickly just to have a quick look, now what we do in a C sharp script is uh, something we're going to be talking about really soon, I think in like two episodes, but right now we just, uh, we just need to understand that we create a C sharp script, we do it in the asset folder and that is pretty much it. We're going to be leaving it here for now and I'll simply put it inside of our script folder. This is something that you need to realize is connected in your Windows Explorer as well. So if you were to just wipe the asset folder on your project, if you were to just delete this guy here, you would also delete all of your asset in your game. So just be really careful about that. And I'm going to be wrapping this up. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about objects and their components. So the things on the right hand side here. So guys, thanks all for watching. Leave a like on the video if you'd like to see more courses. If you'd like to just give me a comment, you can also do that in the comment section down here. And um, also check out the Patreon page if you wish to support me. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.